Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian Grieve. Uh, I'm the product delivery lead at Moodle. Uh, I'm going to be talking um, about the jams. Uh, I'll give a bit of an introduction and then I will talk about the dev jam. Um, hopefully Fetty will turn up uh, and he can turn and talk about the next section after that. And lastly we have Ryan here who will be finishing up. <clears throat> okay, so we've been doing dev jams for a long time. Uh, as Moodle started, we heavily focused on development only, and so all of the dev jams also focused purely on development. But as we've grown as a company, we've expanded the way that we do our development. Uh, it now includes UX and also um, user experience. And due to that, we have also uh, included these disciplines into the Dev Jams. Last year, we had them all together in the one room, and we had everybody split out into many different groups. Um, it was great to see, uh, but this year we decided to specialize and so we actually split them off into different rooms and um, ran them concurrently at the same time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so previous, previous jams have been a mixture. Uh, the first one I went to, which was about 11 years ago, um, was a more hands-on uh, active development. We had rooms dedicated to topics and people were there actually working through problems while we had somebody at the front lecturing the whole group. Um, and then they've sort of chopped and changed. Sometimes they're interactive, other times they're more of a, a question and answer session. Um, so I'm going to talk about dev jams. Uh, <clears throat> after that first uh, dev jam that I went to where everybody was working uh, and actually coding, I've been chasing that high uh, since then. Um, and due to some have been, well actually most of them have been unsuccessful. Um, the, the, the first time I tried to attempt something like this, uh, we, we weren't prepared for how people were going to interact with us and we needed to give more information as to what our expectations were for, for the jam. And so <clears throat> that first one we had people with no laptops and people that didn't know how to install anything and also people that had computers that were fully locked down and we couldn't install anything onto them. Uh, so that didn't go as well as we had hoped. So it was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do what any good learner does. I'll, I'll prepare better for the next one. Uh, so I, I gained all of the information that I got from, from that jam. And it's like, right, this time for sure. And uh, I let everybody know beforehand what the expectation was. And, and then during the, the first half of the session, I went, hey guys, get ready for, for the activity that we have after the break. Um, for, for the first half, let's, let's uh, do a show and tell as to what other people have been developing and get all excited about doing development. And, and then after the break, we'll get right into it. And then after the break, everybody disappeared. <laughs> Very awkward. And then Martin turned up. Uh, so um, after last year's uh, conference, where it was very heavy with uh, Q&A uh, and just basically giving a, a whole bunch of information uh, about what we were doing. Uh, we took uh, all of the feedback and one of the most resounding things is, we want to code. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I guess we'll give that a go. So, lo and behold, uh, we got everybody in. Uh, we, we did our best to let everybody know that we were going to try and do coding and please, please, please bring uh, an environment that you can develop on straight away. And, and everybody did. Ah, I was blown away. People, people came in, they had their laptops there, 
didn't have to say anything and they were just going at it. I was wandering around and, and, and people were coding. It was incredible. Um, and there it is. The, the high I was chasing right from the start, it was there again. I've uh, just been floating since that day. Um, so uh, I'll run down through what we actually did. Uh, so um, yeah, we, we had many different uh, ideas. Uh, I put these out of order, unfortunately, with my slides, but um, everybody came along. Uh, we pre-informed everybody that uh, we wanted people to get into groups and we wanted to help each other with development. Um, a great part of development, and especially these days, is being able to uh, collaborate with each other. Um, everybody has different skills uh, when it comes to development and different areas and pockets uh, that they are most familiar with. And so it was great to be able to uh, find people that have an issue and then bring them to somebody that has that expertise in that area. Uh, so what I have listed here is a list of the ideas that we had. Uh, this is a very short um, list of it. We actually had about 19 different ones. Um, so uh, I, I don't think I need to read these off for you, um, but you can have a look for yourself uh, as to what they were. Um, yeah, all right. <coughs> so layout for the day. Uh, as I said, I think I switched around the slides, but what are you going to do? Uh, so we welcomed everybody and then uh, we had a short time to uh, give a presentation uh, about what we were going to be working on. Um, it allowed everybody to get energised uh, as to the different projects that we had. Um, and uh, that got us to the point where um, we knew what we were going to do. Uh, then everybody got up and moved to the respective tables where people were working on these different ideas uh, and then and then for hours and hours we just we just did it um, so much so that I was announcing coffee and people just wouldn't move uh, they just kept there's like no I gotta get this done I'm I'm invested in what I'm doing here uh, so after that and lunch and still not moving uh, we finally got to the end of the day where we gave a, a great summary of what we actually managed to accomplish uh, in the amount of time that we had um, success varied it depended on how big the projects were some were extremely ambitious and there's never really an intention to finish uh, but to more make a beginning on uh, what we were working on so Everybody gave a rundown as to how their progress went. Um, and then we took some general questions and answers for uh, things that didn't relate directly to development. Uh, and then we had some awards that we gave out to the different groups. Uh, all right. So yes, shameless self-promotion. Uh, I have my own plugin, which um, I like to promote uh, anytime I've given a, a chance and here I am uh, so they shouldn't, they shouldn't have volunteered me to do this um, this uh, I work on a, a plugin called stash it's a gamification plugin um, it allows you to hide items around a course for students to go and find uh, and then uh, they can actually trade it with each other uh, or um, well to, uh, in the actual dev jam itself, we wanted to have leaderboards because that wasn't existing and uh, a special thanks to Malt Schmitz who joined the group or the team that were working on that and they actually managed to create a leaderboard uh, by the end of the session. Actually, actually multiple leaderboards depending on what it is that the students are looking for. Um, yeah, so that was good. Uh, and then we also worked on a tiny MCE plugin that allows uh, inserting these items around the course easier. Uh, so in the middle picture there's a chest. If you click on that you can open up a dialogue and BAM! Everything works really well. Anyway, enough about me. Um, the actual awards themselves. So we had a voting uh, amongst the whole team. Um, the, the best idea was the AI question plugin. Uh, Basically, it allowed 
a teacher to specify how many questions they wanted to generate uh, and some prompts as to what sort of question um, they, they wanted it filled in with and it goes off and I'm guessing it uh, connects with chat GPT in some way and it will just generate a whole bunch of questions um, related to that uh, in the question bank. Um, so that was voted upon and got the best idea. Um, they gave a demo uh, which was really impressive um, and that's why I would say they won. Um, then we had the craziest idea. Uh, I would say this isn't really a crazy idea. Uh, it, it's a really good idea. Um, we have a plugin for VS Code uh, and it will allow basically templates to be generated. It um, has uh, a lot of the API calls to like the database and stuff like that sort of uh, in the system so that uh, when you're doing your development it pops up Moodle related bits and pieces uh, to help you with your development. Uh, so I think it was a, a really good idea uh, and everybody recognized that, it's just that we didn't have second best idea. Uh, so everybody voted for craziest idea instead. Um, there were a whole bunch of other uh, awards, but uh, I don't want to, I think I'm running out of time. So anyway, yes, that brings us to the UX jam and Fetty. Thank you, Adrian. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk a bit what we did in the UX Jam. Um, first of all, uh, this was our first UX Jam uh, ever, like uh, in the Murumu Global. Yes. <laughs> uh, so it was it was not huge. We had I mean 30 participants, uh, but we said okay, let's let's uh, do what the best we can with with the space we have. Also, it was great because we could uh, make an activity actually that was um, very um, quite small. So we were actually practicing and we were just trying to see what we can do with the Moodle community because we know that UX is something that is coming really strong into Moodle. Um, so we wanted to bring the best value possible to everyone. Um, so this is basically um, the things with it. So um, we had first like an icebreaker. Um, so it was a snowball fight icebreaker. It was really interesting. I, wa I wanted to go a bit deep and, and actually tell how it was because um, we saw it was really cool. We got us all really good feedback uh, from the theory. And it's basically uh, that um, each person has to write uh, two questions, uh, uh, two mm, interesting questions, okay? So they would do to someone else. And then you have to, um, I actually wanted to do it, but I don't have the stick notes. I just have this. So um, basically you write uh, two questions on the stick notes and then you have to throw it on the room. Okay, so it will fall and the room was full of uh, many uh, stick notes and then you have to grab the stick note from someone else, grab two stick notes and make the question to someone else that you don't know. So it was, it was actually really fun. And then we went through two activities that uh, the UX team uh, prepared. Uh, one case study, so basically how um, through the two activities that we were running, um, how we do the, the UX process or some of the tools that we use inside of Moodle. And then one case study on uh, how this result in one of the projects inside the company. Uh, and then of course, Amazing Vibes, uh, we got really, really good feedback. So I'm gonna go. The first activity was a journey mapping. So. Uh, journey mapping is basically a way to understand all the phases the user goes uh, through when trying to achieve a specific goal. So um, I have this one. So basically, uh, so the journey mapping is, is made out of um, like four um, rows and, and there are a few columns as well. So each column is a phase. It's like uh, journey mapping is, um, as I told, it's a way to see the, like, the whole journey and the whole experience through um, uh, like really broad, so it's like even including outside of the outside of the product. So we don't want to say um, very specific activities like inside of Moodle, or we don't want to name like software specific. So it's just about more what the tasks that they do, like prepare, maybe planning for creating a course, for example. And then the thinking is what kind of questions it comes to their mind to the users when doing this, and also how they feel. So if they actually um, are happy or relieved or actually stressed. Um, 
So we did first this, and then uh, you see a few red uh, green dots on the space. So and basically, kind of we cluster the um, the um, kind of the stick nodes, and we said, okay, what what which part of this do you think is the most important one, right? So um, after this we had um, all the journey map. So after voting on a specific problem area, we frame the problem in a way that makes it easier to brainstorm solutions. So once we have, once we voted for a specific problem area, uh, we frame it. So we, you see in this next slide, there's like the kind of the formula. So we put basically um, two stick notes, okay? Uh, we name the user, so in this case, the user is coordinators or instructional team, uh, and then needs to meet a requirement so they can benefit in this way. So all the members um, in, the, in the table, they were writing down uh, the, the requirements that they think they have to, they need, uh, and the benefit. So it's a way also to, um, because one of the goals of this is that um, it's really easy to focus on the solutions. Like many people want to bring the solutions right on the table, it's really exciting. But um, through UX, we follow a process that uh, we bring the problem and we understand a lot of the problem in the context first. And so we can show to all the people that came to the UX Jam how this works and how the outcome of that uh, was really great, at least on my table. Um, uh, they were actually really excited no? when they did the statement and they, they did a conclusion. So they vote in which of the ideas uh, what was better and then they write the final sentence. They, in this case, this was not my table, but one of them, coordinators or instructional team need an efficient process to make it easier for graders to be consistent. So this is like one of the steps to actually um, start brainstorming the solutions. Yeah? So the outcomes are much better. Um, and we did basically did a case study. Um, Savina, one of the UX uh, designers on the team, uh, she did like an amazing project with the uh, activity cards uh, redesign. And she basically showed how we implement like the research through that process. And we have here like a few of the tasks of the users, how they, we have a much better uh, success rate uh, completing the, the, the task or the goal that we specify to the user. And just some of the images. And of course, like as I said before, you know, um, the idea was that every user can, uh, every participant can have um, a bit of the UX process that they understand, and they can apply in their work somehow. So we wanted to to so they can have something meaningful to take back to their work. And actually, I have I missed one slide, but I wanted to put um, the basically the whole uh, UX team because uh, it was actually great when we were planning and we we're doing all these meetings to see what we can do. Uh, and they did like an amazing job. I was part of that. And all, not all of us were here for essentially to be part of the jam, but um, it was definitely something, something really cool. And we were sharing like all the pictures and everything. We were really excited about it. And one last thing is that we're gonna post like um, a bit of the info, so what we did in the jam with pictures uh, on moodle.org slash UX that we're gonna, um, is where we are currently posting like what is happening around UX inside Moodle. So I invite you to go and please visit the site and we'll be posting a bit more about it. That was the UX jam. And now the learning designer jam. Nice. Nice. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Hazen. I am a sales executive with uh, Moodle Services side. Um, but I'm only recently a sales executive. I was raised as a learning designer, so I uh, I like to to remind people of that. And I helped run the Learning Designer Jam along with one of our uh, learning designers from Moodle Services, Lauren Goodman, who's currently presenting in a, another room. So this was also our inaugural Learning Design Jam, and we had 93 registered attendees, which is awesome for the first time that you do an event like this. <laughs> I think it also speaks to the fact that learning designers are so isolated. There's usually only one or two learning designers at a university and they sort of work by themselves. And then when they get to a conference, it's so refreshing to meet and interact with other people who actually understand us at the core of who we are. So uh, that's really fun. 
So our major goals were to define a learning design assessment rubric, uh, collect user stories, and design courseware, and finally de declare a champion. But most importantly, we wanted to make connections between learning designers so we could develop a community of practice that we could rely on once we leave the conference. That's, that's the point of these events, right? Um, so here was our mission. We separated out into teams around certain uh, themes related to lifelong learning. Um, design an innovative learning experience in Moodle, and we were using Workplace for this. We created our own Workplace instance um, on, on Moodle's infrastructure that supports lifelong learning. And we wanted to align with a key aspect of lifelong learning, micro learning, personalization, social learning, lifelong learning, portfolios, or another area. Those examples are from UNESCO's definition of uh, lifelong learning. And then finally, we wanted to write a user story. So to talk a little bit about user stories, this is very similar to what happened in the UX jam. Um, as a user persona, I want to perform this action so that I can accomplish this goal. This is kind of informed by agile uh, methodology and, and development. Some developers might, might recognize this user story idea. Um, so we asked uh, the teams or the individuals, first of all, to share example user stories. So, for example, as a Moodle manager, I want to create lifelong learning portfolios so that I can create a space where our users can engage and cooperate on their own learning portfolios and achieve their goals. Uh, another example, and this is a particularly relevant one for Workplace, as an employee uh, who will change her job within the same company, but in a different country, I would like to know which courses my company offers that would help me for my new job. This is upskilling, this is an independently motivated uh, uh, learner who wants to move up in the company. We want to enable that. That's a big piece of lifelong learning. And another example is a learning designer. I want to give the opportunity to students to easily interact with course content in any way, including with their classmates, so more active learning happens. This including with their classmates is something that's huge for learning designers. We really want uh, a community of learning and that's part of what makes lifelong learning successful is that you're interacting with peers and Moodle being developed as a, uh, a, a social learning platform is, is, is perfect for this. Um, now we had a panel of celebrity judges, uh, so I want to first of all give a hand to the celebrity judges that are in the room. I know Mary's over here. Thank you very much. Because not only is it difficult to you know declare a winner, which there's there's everybody's a winner here, right? Um, but they actually took a long discussion forum where we put in criteria for a rubric for LD assessment and created a rubric out of it. Um, and they did that like on the fly. It was very, very impressive. Um, so here, let's talk about the LD assessment rubric. Uh, our first criterion was uh, UI, UX, and accessibility. Uh, these are just some notes. We fleshed these out a little bit more in the room, but um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna kind of run through these pretty quickly. Uh, criterion two was uh, learning outcomes and assessment. Um, one of the things that uh, self-assessment with clear criteria aligned with learning outcomes, we really wanted to give learners a vision into how they're going to be assessed before they submit their assignments. This is one of those big things in LD that is very important, those, that clarity of expectations. Uh, criterion three was content. Obviously, we want to manage expectations. And one of the big things we talked about was multiple means of representation, which is distinct from learning styles. I mean, there's learning preferences, but it's, uh, uh, we wanted to talk about multiple means of representation uh, because the learning styles um, is, is, is not the, uh, that research has been kind of debunked at this point. Um, finally, criterion four is interaction. We wanted peer feedback, peer collaboration, peer interaction. Notice those first three are peers. So we're really focused on uh, social interaction. And our fifth criteria was uh, engagement, um, gamification, personalization, and multiple learning paths. So I want to show you how some of these uh, criteria manifested in actual course design, because we separated out into teams and everybody actually designed courseware uh, in this uh, three hour uh, chunk that we had, which is not enough time to design courseware. Um, so, oh, wait, there we go. Uh, so, for example, I was very impressed with this. Um, 
the multiple means of representation. We had a uh, assignment in this course, which was, uh, it's, it was called, what is the assignment activity is the assignment. You can tell we're just using sort of placeholder text here, but it was presented as text, as video, as audio, and then they added documentation. So whether you wanted to read your prompt, you wanted to watch your prompt, or you wanted to listen to your prompt, it was there and available for you in this course. Uh, it was very, very cool because they had stealth activities that these linked to, and then they would finally submit their work after they were presented their assignment in the way that most match their needs. Uh, personalization, um, tiles uh, really, there was a lot of tiles format uh, in this uh, uh, courseware that we worked on. But you see here there's group one, group two, and group three. In onboarding and learning goals, there is a group self-selection where you would select which group you wanted to go into, and then group one, two, or three would be available to you based on that group uh, that you selected. So, and each of those groups was based on a different area that you might be interested in as a learner. Um, design and personalization, again, we see tiles here, uh, but the, um, we use filter codes in this course to uh, address the learner directly. Uh, if you haven't used the filter codes plugin, it uh, can take user profile fields and insert them into text anywhere on the uh, anywhere on the Moodle, and also a basic CSS styled button within that text editor uh, that takes what would be just a text link and turns it into something that you know looks like part of the part of the the site. Um, and this one was very, I had not seen the H5P, oh, there's Laura some text down there, whoops. Uh, <laughs> I had not seen the H5P virtual tour um, in action, but these were all 360 pictures with nav points in them. So you could not only spin all the way around 360 in these, and these are all different parts of the tour, but these things, uh, these little arrows here on the screen, nav you to the next 360 picture. And you could walk through the Barcelo Sants Hotel in this H5P module. It's like a build your own street view. It was very, very cool. Um, so here's the winning team. I don't know, do we have anybody from the winning team that's in the room today? We're gonna give them a hand anyway because they're great. <laughs> Um, but there were several honorable mentions, and of course, like I said, everybody is a winner. So anybody that was at the LD Jam, raise your hands. I see a couple of people in here that were at the LD Jam. So yeah, give you a hand as well. <laughs> uh, and thanks to everyone, and I really look forward to participating in more LD Jams like this in the future, especially now that we have a rubric and some base expectations. We're really gonna hit the ground running next time. So. Um, thank you very much. I really appreciate you uh, attending and listening to us. And uh, that's it for our What Was All That Jam About session.